Here's a situation you may have found yourself in before. You're trying to figure out the chords to a song and you know for a fact that one of the chords is some kind of G chord. Only when you play G major, it doesn't sound quite right, and when you play G minor, it also doesn't sound quite right. The chord in question may have been a power chord consisting just of the root and the fifth, and while it may be technically of either major or minor tonality based on the context of the song, including the third of the chord completely ruins the effect that the power chord has as a voicing. The jazz chord theory world is built off of tertiary harmony, and even the wildest altered extensions or most disgusting polychords are coming from a foundation of stacking notes up in thirds. Without that foundation of the third and seventh, you don't get the flat thirteenth or sharp eleventh or what have you. But the color of a chord depends just as much on the notes you leave out as it does on the notes you include, and leaving traditional chord theory to the side for a second can open up some interesting avenues of musical exploration. Let's talk about chordioids. Let's talk about chordioids! A chordioid, according to Wikipedia's definition, is a group of notes that doesn't fall into a traditional chord qualification. This definition is so broad as to be basically meaningless, and I want to use the term a little bit differently here. In typical chord theory, your bass chord has a root, third, fifth, and seventh, with additional extensions sprinkled on top as needed. By letting go of some of these necessary notes, you can build really colorful three-note chords that are annoyingly hard to label. Jazz chord theory often does this with the fifth of the chord, simply leaving it out and allowing the other notes in the voicing to imply the fifth's existence. This works because the fifth doesn't actually add any meaningful harmonic information to a chord, and its inclusion can oftentimes muddy up a voicing. Animal Crossing New Leaf's 1PM music makes use of these shell voicings to outline the full sound of a major 7th chord in a stripped down way. The bass part in the piano is playing the roots of each chord, G and D, and the accompanying chord stabs are made up of two notes each, the 3rd and the 7th. Technically, you could consider these chordioids because they're both missing the fifth, but as mentioned before, the addition of the fifth wouldn't actually alter the effect of the chord in any meaningful way, besides maybe thickening up the voicing. In this instance, it would just be dead weight. The kind of chordioid that I find much more interesting, and the kind that I want to focus on here, can be found just a few bars farther in, where we get a G and B over a C in the bass. This is a C major 7 chord that's dropping the 3rd, just the same way that you could drop the 5th, only in this case the effect is much different. If you added the 3rd, an E underneath this G, the chord takes on a different, and dare I say slightly worse, quality. Let alone the fact that a jazz nerd might see a C major chord symbol and throw in the 9th, 13th, and maybe even the sharp 11th too, and you can see how calling this a C major 7 isn't accurately reflecting the sound of this chordioid. Or rather, it's not a precise reflection of the sound of the music. I realize how pedantic this sounds, but it opens up the door to a ton of musical exploration even on this simple level. We see chords without 7ths all the time, they're just called triads. And we see 7th chords without 5ths all the time as well, as we saw in the previous example. But I have rarely seen 7th chords without their 3rds, and I think these harmonic colors are worthy of more exploration. The accompaniment to Undertale's Snowy is chock full of these kinds of chordioids in the initial section. We see a chord built off of C, including the root 5th and major 7th, alternating with another C chordioid, including the root 6th and major 7th. This extended chord with a lack of 3rd or 5th provides a simultaneously exposed and colorful sound. To label these bars with chord symbols, you could think of these as slash chords. With the emphasized D in the melody, this first voicing could be seen as a G over C, and this definitely gives off a G over C type of sound. The following bars use similar chordioid accompaniment, but the addition of the melody implies an F sharp minor 7 over B kind of sound. In both instances, you have a 5 over 1 slash chord, using first the major scale as a bass, then the minor scale. The problem with these labels is that they don't take into account the utility of moving between these two three-note voicings. C, G, B to C, A, B creates harmonic motion. 
The CAB voicing is dissonant, even though it could be considered our tonic major chord, and resolving back to the initial CGB voicing creates a sense of resolution even though we haven't made any traditional harmonic movement. These three note chords sound totally different from one another, and the implication of this kind of harmonic resolution is really exciting to me, but trying to paint these bars with a big C major 13 or G add 2 over C doesn't do justice to what's actually happening. I'm not attempting to put forward some new labeling convention that covers these kinds of chords because I don't think it would be possible to have a labeling system nuanced enough that wouldn't be just as complicated as reading sheet music. I just know that I tend to approach composition from a chord symbol first perspective, and putting forward the idea of chordioids as a potentially useful compositional tool can help break out of that mindset. Chord symbols aren't supposed to be the be-all, end-all of music analysis anyway. They're an oversimplified abstraction of what's going on in the music to be used for analytical purposes. Using these kinds of chordioids works well in a non-functional context, as we see in this example. The alternating C major and B minor tonalities offer a fun juxtaposition of sounds and later on in the tune we see different kinds of colorful major chordioids sliding chromatically around to different key centers. A similar, non-functional usage of these chordioids can be seen in Norfair's theme from the original Metroid, which opens with a 1, flat 2, 4 voicing being shifted around between D, C, and F tonic notes. This is a fun example of a chordioid that doesn't use the 3rd, 5th, or 7th, but in a typical harmonic analysis you could say the 5th is being implied for each chord and label them sus4 flat 2 chords, a voicing that's typically considered an expression of the Phrygian scale. This is, I think, where chordioids kind of shine, because while this cluster voicing can be derived from the Phrygian scale, it is not in any way equivalent to an alternate Phrygian voicing that could include the third or fifth or a variety of other extensions. The sound of these chordioids creates such a particular mood for this area of the game. It can be useful as a composer to have this kind of writing in your tool belt, should a project call for it. If you're used to thinking in a typical harmonic fashion, this kind of non-functional nonsense might not occur to you. And for those of us who don't have the ears and instinct of a Hirokazu Tanaka, knowing that a 1-2-4 voicing can be an option for a piece of music can open the door to creating these kinds of musical atmospheres that just aren't possible otherwise. In the wild, chordioids like this are most commonly found acting as partial voicings of a larger chord. That is, one instrument may be playing a chordioid while other instruments fill in extra notes that recontextualize that chordioid as part of a full, legitimate chord. This is another idea that can be very fun to mess around with, and we see a perfect example of it in Pikmin 2's Perplexing Pool. The acoustic guitar plays repeating three-note sequences that often add up to some kind of chordioid. If we consolidate the notes in the guitar part into chords, the A section gives us this progression. Two of these chords can be justified in a tertiary system as sus2 chords, sure, but for our purposes here that doesn't really matter. The first chord, consisting of a root, a second, and a sixth, looks like a B-flat 6-9 chord without the third or fifth. Again, this gives it a very specific kind of quality that would be lost if the third was just added in indiscriminately. When the melody comes in, it very clearly outlines B flat and C major triads before resolving to F and landing ultimately on a G. This creates this strange situation where the melody is providing the harmonic progression while the accompaniment just adds some static color. In the context of the two parts together, the melody feels like it's alternating between B flat major 7 and C7 colors, and the chordioidal accompaniment complements both equally well. This idea becomes even clearer when the Pikmin begin working, which cues the addition of a bass part. This later part of the melody clearly outlines a C, C minor, C sus2, C minor progression over top of a continuous C, D, G, or C sus2 arpeggio in the guitar. But the addition of the bass and the low guitar B flat pedal recontextualizes this chordioid into several different chords. G minor 13, C minor add 2, 
F sus 6 9 and E flat major 13 over B flat, moving on to an A flat major 7 sharp 11 sound. All of these wild chords are constructed with the same three notes on the guitar, and having that consistent texture pitted against the hectic movement in the surrounding voices creates a very cool effect. I'm generally not too interested in advanced music theory concepts. I could say the reason is that I think there's plenty of unexplored territory to be found in tonal, equal temperament, A equals 440 music, and this is true, but to be honest a lot of music that uses more advanced compositional techniques really just doesn't do anything for me. However, I think this topic of chordioids is something that you could consider advanced that doesn't fall into the trappings of the avant-garde. It's a technique that's advanced not in its complexity, but in its precision. So if you're interested in playing with this idea on your own, here's a handful of chordioid types that I've been playing with that you might like to try. I'll put a Google Drive link in the description with a PDF of all of these examples. I know I've been having fun exploring what's possible with these kinds of voicings, so I thought I should share. If any of you are going to be at Mag West this week, I'll be presenting a couple of panels there and I'd love if you came to hang out. And for those of you who have yet to buy tickets, you can use promo code 8BMT to get $15 off of your purchase. I'll put a link for that in the description below as well. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon here, you can follow me on Twitter there. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.